See, and they really look out. Real. Let's Oakland's be real. the way the trade trade let's away Gruden. Be, yeah, I know, but let's be real. If Gruden would have had to play anybody else that you're in the Super Bowl, they would have got their asses punched in. Who knows? No, I I know because both players on both teams, both players on both teams. Uh, Rondé Barber came out in in the in the document the thing they did do you know where they talk about it, and he basically said, "Dude, we were we were flying high the whole week. We were so arrogant and cocky because we knew their playbook. We knew all their checks, their calls, their signals because they didn't change a damn thing from when Gruden left. And then recklessly they flip over to offensive linemen. You remember their center that went disappeared, and they later found yes. out he had like CTE concussion problems, but yeah. he disappeared." Do you know what set him off on his tangent? Because no. they got in an argument with Callahan about changing the playbook and that Gruden knew all that. Just changing their signals. He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. And that set that dude off where he, he had a mental breakdown the night of the Super Bowl and, and never got to play in the only Super Bowl he's ever in because of that. So, like, yes, I'm, yeah, I can tell you that. Because let's be real, Gruden's team wasn't that great. His, his offensive scheme and defensive scheme was only good because he had a Hall of Fame class of defensive players. Simeon Rice, Warren Sapp, Rondé Barber, John Lynch. He had uh, Warwick Dunn, Allstott. Freaking, uh, uh, he had uh, uh, Ke- uh, Johnson and freaking Keenan McArdle. Like their team you mean was Keyshawn stacked. Johnson? Keyshawn, well, Johnson and Keenan McArdle. Keenan McArdle. Keenan McArdle. 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 It doesn't matter. It's the same damn name. It's pronounced different. Mm. Name's motto. He came over from San Diego. They were stacked, and that wasn't the team he built. But because and, – and they were intercepted passes. They had like five turnovers in that game because they knew the routes, knew what they were, the reads. They knew the hot routes. And then even when they tried to check, they were jumping on the checks because they knew all the hand signals and checks. Ridiculous, and, th- and they haven't been. And he he went he was under five hundred from that point on in his career because he couldn't face the Raiders and his old team every week. I mean, Gruden's really an overrated coach. He's a great personality. He's great on TV. Does great okay, breaking down I'm not, I'm not talking about their one. Su- I was talking about their one Super Bowl. I was talking about now or even recently. I will take the Bucks this over the Lions. They're more you, competitive than the Lions. I just think you're, they're wishy-washy either way. Like the they're, Lions had some years no. where they were, they give us tough games. I, you know, I don't know. I think that's one's uh, that one's is, is where apples. go look at I the think, rivalry record. I think where that's like Macintosh apples and freaking Fuji apples, man. They're both red with some yellow on them. No, I'm. I will take the Bucks over the Lions because they at least have put up more fights I'm not than the Lions. I say one or the other. I think they're, they're kind of equal. I don't think one's greater than oh, the other. And in the past, what is it, in the past decade and a half, the Bucks have won multiple division titles. The Lions haven't won a division title since, what, 1993? Yeah, the Bucks also play in a division that's crappy, that for a lot and, of years the worst went to first, first went to worst. The well, even when, North the is at end, least a dominant yeah. division at the top. Even when they were in the NFC Central, they still were competitive. That's what I'm saying. They were still competitive with every team that was there. The Vikings, the Bears, the Packers, well, and the Bucks were tell you all this right now. competitive. I do kind of miss the Bucks because even though I was a Packer fan, I always had this affinity for their logo and stuff and their colors. They are a pretty cool team. Better than the Lions. The Lions are a shit stain on the NFL and the NFC, and the NFC North especially. I'm not going to go that far. You have I a am. hatred for the Lions. I don't have Because they're Lions so country. bad. How do you, you I'm like, sorry. I you literally my, are three. My dislike for Drew Brees as a as a all-time Pantheon quarterback is is outmatched by your disdain for the Lions and Matthew There's Stafford. Three, ten. No, I have respect for Stafford. I feel bad for Stafford because he's stuck in that shit organization. I'm sorry. Martha Ford, you're selfish as shit. You don't take care of your team. You you literally have your star quarterback sitting on the sidelines with a broken back rather than trying to get the thing healed. Come on now. Like, that, that is a complete, utter shit show. It, it is. I, I can't say I any other one. With that you. bad. They're they're horrible, dude. Like every other, what is it? 
they have a couple good years every now and then, and every now and then, by their definitions, is what, decades? Something like that. Hell, at least the Bears have a playoff win this decade. And that was exactly 10 years ago. The the Lions' last playoff uh, win was in 1991. Brett Favre got there. And you know who they beat that year? <coughs> what for which one? Which year? 91. Was it the Cowboys? I think it was the Buccaneers. No, the Yucks were in the playoffs in the 90s. That's when they were nicknamed the Yucks. In the, early, in the late 80s and the early 90s, they were nicknamed the Yucks because they had those ugly-ass orange creamsicle unis. That was the seventies costume. No, that was yeah, yeah that was right before because it was ninety. That was the seven, that was the mid nineties when they got the new unis. Nineteen ninety seven is when they changed their new uniforms and they went uh, to that yeah. that uh, that really cool one that they now changed into something stupid again. I like the mid nineties ones when Gruden was there with the great the that like yeah. gray silver helmet. Now when all stop with all that when A train was running over anyone. It was yes. all stop and work done, man. They're unstoppable duo. That was true thunder and lightning. But either way, so that that's my point is that whole this whole segment. I'm sorry, the Lions. I feel like we could go find an AAF team, the Alliance, American Alliance football team, somewhere. Take that whole roster, replace it on what they have, and then just leave Stafford there. They would probably be better. I don't know about that. The, uh, dude, the Lions are that bad. That's why when people say, oh, yeah, the Packers only won because of a, a ref call against the Lions. No. When you blow a 13-point lead in the first quarter well, and you don't Lions put up any of their production. The lost that game because they need to be better. Because they, they had five field but goals in that game better. in the red zone. Be better. And they, and they missed two of That's them, That's 20 too. points. That. How many points did they lose by? One, one point, 23 to 22. Oh, and they left 20 they missed, points on the field. Is that not, two, how many points would that make them win by? 19, they, right? They missed two field goals as well. Oh, so that's 26 points. So be better. I know, I know, and I'm right there with you, but that's my point. The Lions, like they always complain, oh, yeah, well, like some actually fans have complained, oh, yeah, well, Bobby Lane cursed us. What? Bobby Lane cursed you, no, dude. This has been sixty with years. A very impassioned Lion fan that does not believe in the Bobby Lane curse. No, no, I know he doesn't, but I'm just talking about. There's Look, a lot out there that do. I have heard Julius make statements about the Panthers that I know diehard Panther fans wouldn't make. So if Julius says there's no Bo- Bobby Lane curse, I'm taking his word for it. Yeah, that's he's also told super, me the Lions will win the division multiple that's years too. One so, superstitious yeah. Homer and. Mofo, if I've ever met one. So if he doesn't believe in it, doesn't exist. It's just an excuse. He has told me multiple years, especially in the service, the Lions are going to win the division this year. He come, Man, He told us at one point they were going to be thirteen and three and run away with the NFC. Dude's delusional. If he does not believe in the Bobby Lane curse, it doesn't exist. That's what I'm saying. It's there, baby. Bobby Lane is alive and well in the the Lions. Ford Can't Field sitting Won't up top eating popcorn. I want players that want to win. See, my thing is that this whole Matthew Stafford thing is exactly the perfect example that what the Lions are. Oh, you, you broke your back? All right, we're, we're just going to let you stay on the sidelines. We're, we're not going to put you on injured reserve. But also, too, we're going to keep it secret and not put you on the injury report for about 10 weeks. Like, you know they're about to get fined for that, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's a biggie because it's not like it's just a small injury. And then they just put him on injured reserve for his back. So I just, this whole thing is just a giant, utter shit show with with Detroit. I, it blows my mind that how can you just be this bad? Like, even off the field, they're that bad. I can't, I can't I can't believe it. You know what? I'm so flustered. Jay, let's take another break. Taking a break and we're going to we're going to do our power rankings next. 
Yes, we can do those. All right, we're coming back after this. Power rankings, guys. And if you haven't had enough of our banter tonight, you want to visit NFL Addictions on Facebook.com for all of your NFL banter and chatter. It's not a trash talk site, so keep it clean and keep it cordial. That's NFL Addictions on Facebook.com. And if you still got an itch to scratch when you're done with that, you want to visit Raz Addictions on Facebook.com for their version of the raffle for all kinds of cool prizes, even a chance at winning some cash. You buy a $10 raffle ticket for a chance at winning $100. That's a chance at making 10 times your money. It don't get any better than that. That's Raz Addictions on Facebook.com for a chance at all kinds of cool prizes. Tell them what you've won, Dave. I've won everything from tailgating barbecue sets that I have a Packers one that I won, folks, for $400. I put $40 down on the spot. I won it, and it was out of 20 spots. It's really worth it. I've also won helmets that are signed. I've won banners that are signed. I've won memorabilia rings. I've won footballs that are signed and other Packers knickknacks because that's my team. But go ahead and check them out. Cheap, affordable prices for certified, authentic stuff. That's Raz Addictions on Facebook.com. Go there, play, and win. And as always, you can follow us on Twitter at First and Goal Pod, myself at UPJ33. Dave is at Steak and Cheese, and the Fantasy Wonder himself, Dylan, at Dylan Busby1. Email us at First and Goal Podcast at Yahoo.com with all your football and Packer questions and comments, and you just might find yourself making the show live. That's First and Goal Podcast at Yahoo.com. All right, and we are back. So I guess it is time to go to our power rankings, Dave. A little bit. Per usual. FYI, people, Dylan is not here if you haven't noticed tonight. So we're, we're going on this one. As as per usual, this will be the, uh, the last on-air power rankings for us, as this is the last Tuesday of first and goal, man. I know. I'm excited because next week we start at 8.30. Yeah, we'll be on prime time. 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Western Pacific time. So that means if you're stuck in your car out there in L.A., turn on the speaker and listen to It Will Be Title Town Brawl. 8.30 Tuesdays and Thursdays. Be there or be square. And we haven't decided on our post-game schedule for our third show. But uh, we will we will work that out. I know Monday night will be easy because it's just right after the game. It's not like it's such a late game. Well, yeah, it should be it should be easier then. Anyway, enough talking All about right. bittersweetness. All right, I'll start off. Thirty-two through twenty-one: Cincinnati, Miami, Washington, Detroit, Giants, Arizona, Carolina. New York Jets, Jacksonville, Los Angeles Chargers, Denver, Atlanta. All right. I got the Bengals staying true. Redskins stay the same. Lions at 30 stay the same. 29 Giants stay the same. The Cardinals down one spot at 28. 27 the Dolphins up a spot. 26 the Jets stay the same. 25 the Panthers down two spots. 24 the Chargers down two spots. 23 the Raiders down three spots. 22 the Jaguars are up three spots. And 21 the Falcons move up three spots. Yeah, that was a big win for them. Uh, number they still can't tw- crack the top 20, though, because they're still terrible. We'll see. Maybe they can get some big wins at the end of the season. Well, I mean, uh, so, um, yet, I say, and they... Not quite. Well, 20 to 11. I've got Oakland, Indy, Chicago, Cleveland, Tampa Bay, Philly, the Rams, Dallas, Pittsburgh, and Tennessee. All right, at 20, I've got the Broncos moving up a spot. The Colts go down one spot to 19. The Bucks. 